Hey guys, thanks for joining me on day two of the North Downs Way. Uh, just climbing back up to the trail here. Uh, had a pretty ugly night. Um, didn't realize how dehydrated I got yesterday. Uh, drank plenty. Had to get up in the night to you know pee. So I thought I was plenty hydrated, but man, really rough night. Uh, the highlight, lots of owls that we could hear, and we did sit and watch the bats for a while, which was definitely cool. Always fun to see them out hunting for bugs, because then they don't eat me. So the one obvious problem with doing as a trail the way I'm doing it, sort of backpacking it properly, is having to drop down to the car and then hike all the way back up again the next day. Um, but it was worth it to, you know, have a good comfortable bed even if I did have a rough night. I can only imagine how much rougher it would have been in a tent. Anyway, uh, the highlights of today, uh, I'll be going through or by Denby's Vineyard, which is um, it's quite good, uh, it's just outside of Dorking. Um, and then we'll be climbing Box Hill after crossing the River Mall and the Stepping Stones, following along Box Hill, dropping down briefly and then re-climbing back up Rygate Hill. Um, and along this section, I believe there's some old relics of World War II, which we'll take a look at. So what you're seeing behind me is what I brought up earlier. What, these are pillboxes and they were a last line of defense um, along the North Downs for Second World War. They were built in such a construction as it was a very simple way to build and they could go up very, very quickly. Each of these de de uh, defended a very strategic point. There would be tank traps and this was all due to an anticipated German invasion that never actually happened. They were very simply constructed and there was actually no living quarters so whoever was here didn't have a very good uh, few weeks while they were here but they were you know they were dry and they were you know they were important for what they were so anyway let's go take a look inside and see if uh, my flashlight is strong enough to to check it out So as you can see, we've got lots of little windows where they would have been able to fire a rifle out of. Um, very, very simple in here. But it's definitely quite cool that they don't have these barred off and you can actually come in and take a look around. As you can see, nature is starting to take a hold in here. So we're about, I'd say about two miles in, um, come to the first road crossing after Gomshall or between Gomshall and Box Hill. 
and they've got some forestry work going on and there is no sign. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, if you come and do this, when you come out either direction, whichever way you're doing it, um, to look for the bollards um, that will tell you where the trail is. It's actually not signposted down here and this sign is hidden. Um, so you can't actually see it from coming out of the trail on the other direction. So just a little bit of information there that I hope somebody will find useful. Currently doing a little bit of uh, trail finding. Apparently took the wrong fork of the trail. Um, the fork, I don't know, maybe 200 yards back there. And I could walk back and take the right one. Um, but there's no sign at the fork, so I went the way that it looked like it was most used following the bike tracks. Yeah, it wasn't the right way. So we're, huh, I think we found the trail though. Easily done. Don't berate yourself if you happen to lose the trail, even the, those of us who are experienced hikers and backpackers lose the trail once in a while. So we're now just starting our descent off of the top of the North Downs, passed by Sabornimus Church at Ranmore Common, which is and Ranmore Common is just to the north of us a little bit, on the other side of the North Downs, to the side that we've been following. We've been on the south side. Um, but we're dropping down into the Denvies Wine Estate through here, um, following a paved road, but it's really only used for tours, feeding the animals doing fences and stuff like that. It's not a public nose road, it's just a, a driveway sort of thing, but it's a long meandering road down, so uh, it does take quite a while to do it. It does actually feel very never ending, um, but of course it makes for easy walking and you'll find it quite busy, but um, we'll drop down to the wine estate and would definitely recommend stopping there if you get the chance to. Um, pop in there, have a glass of wine or even lunch. Uh, they do produce some really good food. So. Definitely a good stop for lunch if you're going to do this entire section or a good place to end up if you do the Gomshall to Box Hill section or vice versa, Merstham to Box Hill. So we're looking out over the, the vineyards of Denbys and they're starting their harvest. It's that time of year when all the grapes are, are, are getting ready. Um, but just behind us you can see Box Hill, which is what we're going to be climbing after lunch. Um, and it's definitely one of the high points in South England, very, very well known around here. And the view from the top is absolutely stunning. So we've just crossed under the railroad with a beautiful bridge that you can see behind me. Um, and we are just getting up to the A24, which Unfortunately, this time of day is going to be really busy, so I think it does have an underpass, um, but I could be wrong, otherwise we'll be taking our life in our hands and dodging traffic again. So yeah, a little bit of traffic dodging there. I think there is an underpass, but I think it's further up and I just didn't really feel like veering, you know, making a detour and veering off of our path. So we're at the stepping stones for the River Mall. Uh, park, car park isn't too busy. So we'll see if we could just sit there, enjoy lunch, let the dogs play in the water for a while. So just that you're aware, if the river is too high to use the stepping stones, there is a bridge that isn't that far from them, it's on the map. 
um, but worth knowing that it's there if you're doing this generally in winter or after high rain. So we've left our stepping stones behind, we're about to stop for lunch and well, I don't think I can pick a better lunch spot. Look at that. Right along the river. And a tree has fallen over just perfectly to make a lovely bench. So we're gonna chill here for a while, enjoy lunch, enjoy the river before we have to climb that massive box hill. You want it? Go get it. Well, we've had lunch, we passed the stepping stones. I can no longer avoid the big climb to the top of Box Hill. Thankfully, most of it is shaded, but it is also very busy, so um, not always my favorite thing, but it is, like I said, an icon in Surrey, Southeast England. So it's always very busy and owned by the National Trust. Definitely my least favorite part of this section. Although the climb up to Rygate Hill is almost as bad as this, but I think it's slightly less steep. I believe it's more of a gravel track than a steps to do it. So, ooh, already winded. All right, a million and a half steps down. Only a million and a half to go. But man, those views are opening up pretty quickly. Sometimes I prefer a short and steep ascent than the long drawn out ones. Get her over and done, it's kind of a pain, but at least you know you get to the top and you're done. Alright, leaving Salomon's Memorial behind. Um, wasn't any information, so I'm gonna have to look it up. Um, but we are back in the shade and leaving the crowds behind. Again, like I said, Box Hall is a very popular place. So, Box Hill was named after the ancient box woodland that uh, covers its western steep escarpment, um, the, the, the face that's looks down on the River Mall. Um, on either side of it, it has supports chalk grassland, which supports 38 different species of butterfly up here. It is known as a triple SI, which is a site of special scientific interest. Try saying that three times fast. It is also the summit of the entire North Downs at 735 feet or 224 meters. Um, and 
even though the most popular place is Salomon's uh, Memorial, the highest point is actually Betchley, Betchworth Clump. said that climbing up Box Hill was probably my least favorite section. I'm going to retract that statement because we just came down this in order to turn around and go right back up this. I hate it when trails don't make sense. Makes no sense. So just behind us, even though you can't see it, is a chalk quarry. And at center were two lime kilns that were the bustling with bustling with activity um, all the way up until the end of the Victorian era. Um, but it was continually mined until 1936. Two tr uh, narrow gauge tracks hauled in the chalk uh, to be processed here and then turned into lime. But now the, r the railway cuttings, the the chalk cliffs, they've all been reclaimed by nature at this point um, and provide some very interesting habitat for many, many native species of uh, chalk grassland species. Um, and also the, 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 the only thing that's still standing that we're going to see is the, uh, the, the old kilns and actually provides roosts for eight different species of bats, which is quite neat. So something else we're passing through is what's called Duke's Plantation, which is an entire plantation of native yew trees. Yew trees are native to the UK and they thrive on this chalky soil. Their, their roots can, can hold on very, very tightly to the steep slopes that we've come across quite a lot on this walk. Um, yew is actually a really, really dense wood. It's very, very useful. It used to be used for longbows and is now more used for uh, cabinetry and for uh, cabinet work um, and sculpture. Um, it also produces a chemical called Taxol, which is currently used to treat breast cancer, so something we didn't know there and shows that nature actually has a way of fixing stuff. This is a good one. I'll tell you, at least on Box Hill, they have the decency to put chairs every you know, 100 yards, a couple hundred yards, stop and take a break, enjoy the view, but not here, not on Rocky Hill. Let's suck it up and get on with it. So I guess we'll do that. Woohoo! We made it to the top of Rocky Hill without too many pauses. We are now turning towards Rygate Fort. Um, it is pretty level from here on out um, until we hit Rygate Fort and the Rygate Hill. And then we drop down for the last couple of miles into Merstham and through yet another golf course. What you're seeing over my left shoulder is the Inglis Memorial. It was donated in 1909 by Lieutenant Colonel Sir Robert William Inglis um, to the Rygate Borough. Um, and its original function was actually as a fountain to water horses at the top of the main um, thoroughfare over uh, Rygate Hill. Now all it is, it's just a place, beautiful place to rest, to enjoy the scenery. You can come sit and just take in the beautiful world. Wow, beautiful ceiling. I didn't even know this was here. I knew the memorial was here, but actually if you stand on one of these benches, it echoes quite well. So, we'll get out of there because it's not great for camera audio to 
stand in there and have that bounce back on you. Really cool little spot though, and that was a, quite a view. You even saw, um, not, I don't think it was a peregrine falcon, but it might have been, um, hovering kind of parallel on the level with us, which was very, very neat. So the area you see behind me, two wingtips, is a location of a B-17 bomber crash that happened in 1945. It was called the Flying Fortress and it killed all nine members of crew on board, which is quite sad. So this is a memorial for that and the, the wingtips were actually carved out of wood to commemorate exactly where it crash landed. So what you see behind me is Rygate Fort. It was built in 1898 during a time of serious mistrust between the English and the French. It was a belief that there was gonna be a massive invasion from France. So this was built to protect London and thus the rest of the country. During this time, England was building new steam powered ships that would, ha would have the power to repel an attack if the French crossed the channel. So I find what's interesting is actually I would have thought that this was part of the system of pillboxes that were constructed in for World War II. But in actuality, it was the late 18th century that, or late 19th century, that this was actually constructed. Uh, I believe that some of this brick is still is quite modern, but um, yeah, it's definitely kind of interesting to see what was here and what it would have looked like. And you can imagine the fear that some of these uh, soldiers would have had, not knowing if there was an invasion coming. They didn't have the technology that we, the, we had today. They wouldn't have had, you know, hours and days of notice. They would have, they would have had last minute notice to get ready. And this was a very, very well protected building, especially that magazine area, uh, most protected building in the complex. But what a cool location. Wish we had more time to check it out, but sadly, we have a train to catch. So guess what we're walking through? Our third golf course. Um, and that tells us we're actually almost to Merstham um, and the end of our day. So really enjoyed having you guys along. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and please hit that like but button. And if you would love to be part of the community, hit that subscribe button just to get notifications of when I'll be putting content out every week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.